On this episode of Canine Corner, we'll be sitting down with Dr. Paula to talk about the canine flu and the canine cold. And we'll learn about a new company that is helping dogs with hip dysplasia and arthritis. And we'll introduce you to this adorable little guy who's looking for a forever home. All this coming up right now on Canine Corner. I'm Rhiannon Tritanich, your host for Canine Corner, the show that your dog will give two paws up. We have a great show for you today. We'll sit down with Dr. Paula from Dr. Paula's Mobile Veterinary Service to talk about the canine flu and the canine cold. And we'll learn about Canine Align, a company that's helping dogs with hip dysplasia and arthritis through their revolutionary product. But first, let's meet adorable rescue dogs from Love Bugs Rescue. So Love Bugs Rescue is a dog rescue. We're foster based in Orange County and we were founded in late 2010. And so to date we've rehomed about eight, over 1800 dogs. And we've also rescued over 70 Parvo puppies from the shelter that would have otherwise been euthanized. And um, one of the things that's important to us is to educate uh, people that it could be completely avoided by just doing the vaccine protocol with your puppies, starting that DHP vaccine at eight weeks old. So Love Bugs Rescue is launching a spay and neuter voucher program. And so what we wanna do is help subsidize some of the costs of the spay and neuter procedures to low income families. So that way we can help um, prevent unplanned births and litters in the communities. Our adoption process is to visit our website and all of our available dogs are on our adoptables page. And the first step would be to complete our adoption application, which is online. And then one of the foster homes reviews all of those applications and then we would be in touch with the families. So ways that you can help Love Bugs Rescue are by fostering is obviously the lifeline of our rescue. We always need new foster homes and we have an application online and basically a foster commitment can last anywhere from two weeks to two months, um, maybe a little bit longer depending on the type of dog and what the dog's needs are. And um, you can also volunteer in other ways by coming to some of our events and helping out with the dogs or you can um, do photography or we always need um, videos of our dogs done. There's just so many ways to help. So if you want to join our team, visit our website at lovebugsrescue.org. This is Scooter. Uh, he is a schnoodle, uh, which is a schnauzer and poodle mix. He is um, about two years old and uh, he was found as a stray. He's been with love bugs. Um, he's a very playful uh, little guy, uh, very loving, loves to go on walks. Uh, he gets along with dogs of all sizes. Uh, he's around them a lot. Um, he's very food motivated, so he needs uh, he's really good at training uh, because he's so focused on food. Uh, he, he loves interactive t uh, treat toys so that he can uh, focus. The ideal home for him would be a home that can focus on continuing training. Uh, he loves his crate, so uh, he eats in his crate and he gets these kind of treats in his tr uh, crate. Uh, we'd love a home with another active dog that he could play with and uh, someone who's going to uh, take him on walks and hikes and uh, focus on training. He's a little nervous around little children, so we're looking at maybe an adult-only home or uh, a home with uh, adult or uh, older children. So he's available through Love Bugs Rescue. He's ready for home. This is Wally. Uh, Wally is a poodle and he is about six and a half years old. Uh, he came to the shelter. There's a program called the OC intervention program where they will try to prevent dogs going into the shelter so he was being owner surrendered and we took him into the rescue he um, loves uh, his crate he is very food motivated he gets along pretty good with all the dogs uh, he's around a lot of them um, he is so food motivated that it's been easy to train he's very smart we went through several courses of obedience training to kind of 
get him more socialized with people and other dogs and he did really well. Um, the ideal home for him would be someone who understands uh, issues like resource guarding. Um, he tends to um, find things and puts a lot of value on them and it's hard to get to take them away from him. So we need someone who understands how to redirect his attention and reward him and build his confidence. Um, he loves going on walks, so someone who will exercise him on a daily basis, but he's pretty low key. He doesn't need uh, really super long walks or extensive exercise, but he's come a long way. He's become uh, very trusting uh, of me. This sort of petting and handling is something he was not very comfortable with. Uh, when he first came to us, but he's come a long way. So we're hoping for someone who will want to take this challenge on and um, provide him a safe, nurturing, um, loving environment. This is Noelle. She is a little Westie mix. She's about two years old, and she is just the friendliest, sweetest girl ever. Um, she can be a little bit nervous when she's meeting new people and going to new places, but she warms up very quickly. She. Um, is a crate trained, walks great on leash. She's friendly with the other dogs in our home and uh, just an all around easy going girl. This is Cash. He is about two years old. He is a Tibetan Terrier and he is just the most um, loving guy ever. I, If I was collecting dogs, this dog would never leave my house, but we can't take more fosters unless we let these go to their forever homes. So he's gonna make someone an amazing pet he, you can see he, he's a little energetic. He wants to get down and run around right now, but he is, uh, he's a good boy. He loves the other dogs in his foster home. He's great on, uh, on walks and on leash. Yeah, he's, a, he's an all around great dog. Just gonna make a wonderful addition to somebody's family. If you are interested in adopting or fostering one of Lovebugs Rescue's dogs, please contact Lovebugs Rescue at lovebugsrescue.org or email them at info at lovebugsrescue.org. So cute. Dr. Paula from Dr. Paula's Mobile Veterinary Service is here now to talk to us about the canine flu, the canine cold, and how to keep our pets healthy. Dogs can get bacterial or viral infections just like people, and they can have symptoms, and I use the word symptom loosely because obviously they can't have tell us what's wrong with them, which is what a symptom is. They have clinical signs, things we see. So they may have a runny nose, they may have some coughing, some sneezing, um, sometimes their eyes look a little crusty, those are things that people might notice. But then if we have something like canine influenza, may mimic a cold at first, you may think that your dog has a cold, uh, you may see similar symptoms, runny nose, coughing, sneezing but it can be a lot more severe. So a more severe case, especially of canine influenza, which is H3N8, um, compared to the human flu, which is H1N1, which by the way, you can actually give your dog the human flu. Good news is they can't give it to you, but you can give your dog or your cat the human flu. So I often ask people, well, have you been sick recently? Because they can catch it from you. Um, but canine influenza is much more serious. So with them, it can be not just a little bit of light coughing, they can actually get coughing fits, they can get nose discharge may not be clear and suddenly it becomes yellow or green, they can get pneumonia. So if you, they get the canine cold or canine influenza, you know, they could, their immune system, if it's an active immune system, may fight it off and we don't need to be too concerned. Canine influenza is a little different than the common canine cold where we can just say, oh, let's wait and see if their immune system kicks in. Canine influenza can actually, within a few hours, progress to more serious symptoms. So if you're seeing serious symptoms, which would be more than the common, oh, my nose is a little runny, but actually they've got a fever, which you may or may not be able to know without um, checking their temperature, but if they're not eating, they're really lethargic, like Malay is lethargic, can't get up. Um, obviously, if they're coughing to coughing fits so that they can't sleep or they can't control their cough, if they're obviously coughing and eating blood, um, more serious symptoms, whenever they're sick, if you have serious symptoms like swelling of the face, rashes, anything that would be concerning, this is the time to go take them into the doctor right away. 
So if it's more serious of symptoms, then, and they go in, it could be different supportive care. So they may need to get sub-Q fluids, like fluids under the skin, if it's just to kind of rehydrate them, make them feel better, help bring down the fever. Um, sometimes we give anti-inflammatory injections um, to help bring down the fever. Antibiotics if necessary, especially for an x-ray, we're seeing that they have pneumonia, if they have a fever, if that discharge again out of the nose was yellow or green, um, if they're coughing up productive coughs so they're coughing up stuff, then they may need antibiotics. Um, they may, they definitely need, will get isolated. If they're really sick and they need to be hospitalized, they're gonna be kept in a, a quarantined area where they can get rest and not spread the, the flu further. Canine influenza, the incubation period from the time that they catch it is about two to four days before they, they, they incubate it and then they show symptoms around like that five to seven days. Um, and then even after they recover, a cough can last anywhere from 10 to 30 days. So they could be getting better and they just have that kind of cough like we all get when we've been sick. It just sticks around. Doesn't mean they're not getting better. They just may have that little cough occasionally. I feel like sometimes we want to see our dogs like improve way more. Yeah. Like we have way higher expectations for them than we do for right. ourselves when we're recovering. I think so, definitely. And when is the uh, canine influenza season? So canine influenza season uh, mirrors the human. It's that midwinter and then summer through midfall. When should you get your dog vaccinated? And this is for the flu, not the cold. Right. right. Okay. Right. The only thing similar to the cold that you could vaccine for would be kennel cough. One recommendation is if your pet's going to be in a situation where they would need to kennel cough, you may want to consider, or Bordetella, then you should consider canine influenza as well. So boarding, um, a lot of the boarding facilities now are actually recommending or requiring it in order to board. Um, if you go to a lot of dog parks, if you travel to other states where kennel, where um, canine influenza is more prevalent, these are good reasons to make sure you're up on your vaccine. And it does require two vaccines. Um, one and then three to four weeks later, a second one. So boarding facilities will maybe only require one, but they're not completely protected until they've had that second one. So you may be able to board, but it won't last, have lasting immunity until you get that next one. And then it's yearly after that. Unfortunately, just like on the human side, the flu vaccine doesn't keep you from getting the flu. It just makes sure you don't get a severe case of it. That could lead to pneumonia. Um, canine influenza has a low mortality. It's usually less than one percent, but there are situations with outbreaks where it can get up to five to eight percent or of death mortality. So we definitely want to protect our pets from it if they're going to be in a situation where they're exposed. So are there any certain animals or, or age groups um, for dogs that are more susceptible to, uh, to getting the canine influenza or the canine cold? I would say probably anybody who's young um, because their immune system's not as active. Uh, anything, any dogs under the age of 12 weeks, um, anyone that's not well vaccinated, then also older pets possibly, especially any ones that are, have other diseases. So if they have an autoimmune disease, if they have diabetes, cancer, these all can prone them to getting more infections. And if I'm worried about my dog getting canine cold, canine or, or canine flu, what are some ways that I could prevent that from happening? So your dog is going to be prone to getting the canine cold or canine flu, much like children, if they're going to community area. So if they go to the dog park, if they go boarding and grooming, um, areas where they're interacting with other dogs, they're going to be more prone. So some of the things you can help to prevent them from getting sick is, one, making sure that they're well vaccinated. And we do have a canine flu now to help protect them making sure or kennel cough if they go they should get their board to tell if they go to those kind of community areas a lot um, when they do go know that it's transmitted by oral nasal discharge so like when little air droplets when they cough and sneeze um, they put it in that or animals pick it up um, you can get it on your clothing um, some viruses not related to canine cold but for example like parvo is very prevalent where it's you pick it up just in the ground or if you're at around a sick animal, you're gonna transmit it back to your animal where they don't even have to interact with the other animal. So making sure you avoid any animals that look sick, um, changing your clothes if you've got any young animals at home, don't change your clothes after you come from the park or places where other animals were. If you take your animal, make sure that they're at least 12 weeks of age and well vaccinated so that they're not immunocompromised when they're around other animals. 
Um, just good policy for keeping them healthy in general. Tell me about uh, your mobile veterinary service, what you guys do, where you go. So we're a house call practice. We go in people's homes for the convenience of you and the comfort of your pets. Um, we're we're fear-free certified, meaning we try to make it as fear-free of an experience as possible. Um, we're very treat-based for that reason. Um, so we do ask if they have food allergies before we start. Um, sometimes we play with toys instead of treats, whatever your dog is into. But I'm very popular yeah. with the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> but it gives us a benefit of being able to see them in the environment that they're comfortable in. We can do it out in the truck. Some people bring us their pets out in the truck, but a lot of times we're doing it in their homes. So they're happily in their beds, on their couches, in their backyards where they're happy. We see um, dogs, cats, uh, pocket pets, um, and it kind of gives us the opportunity to also see their environment so we can get a bigger picture of what's going on. If you are interested in contacting Dr. Paula, please visit drpaulamobile.com or call 310-953-2270. Again, 310-953-2270. Canine Align is not your average pet company. Canine Align is a company we innovate wearable therapy for canine hip dysplasia specifically, but we do cover other mobility issues, including arthritis. Canine Align launched their first product in January of this year, and they are dedicated to helping dogs stay on their paws and live life to the fullest. The Canine Hip Line is our first product to market. It specifically treats the hip dysplasia, so what it does, as you can see here, it's a stretchable, durable, washable garment, breathable. It's not a compression product, but what it does is a single garment that will treat both hips at the same time. Um, the stretchability of the fabric is there for a reason. The design, everything, it is patent pending, and the mechanics behind it is that what the garment does, it stabilizes the hip joint, it promotes appropriative input into the dog's muscle, the trunk, and the hip muscle. So with use over time, you'll get what we call dynamic stability in the hip joint. Canine Hip Line is the first product of its kind and is revolutionary for canines suffering from hip dysplasia and arthritis. Canine Align was created by four co-founders dedicated to helping improve the lives of dogs. Kind of why we felt canine needed to be brought into this world. There's four ways people address hip dysplasia as of today. One is surgery. We all know that can be very, very expensive. Not a lot of insurances cover it and it's very invasive on the animal. Second, you have drugs. That really more addresses pain, but again, it does have side effects. It can get expensive as well. Um, you have physical therapy, um, which is great, but the owner kind of has to remember what to do when they go home. Um, it's not always available in your area if you do have a dog that is suffering. Um, and then you have rigid hardwares, and that really doesn't actually help the issue either. Sometimes it will actually lead to muscle atrophy. Um, the dog can become dependent on it. So we knew there had to be another way. So hence, Canine Align, which is a very cost-effective more of a passive therapy for the animal. The canine hip line retails for $195 and can be ordered online. The canine align team is available by email to answer any questions pet parents may have about the product. We right now have three sizes and they fit dogs in the range from about 45 pounds to 120. Now hip dysplasia and mobility issues can affect all dogs. It's just as we're launching, we are focusing more on the dogs that are suffering the most, which is the medium to large sized dogs. About 20% of the dog population, unfortunately, will suffer from hip dysplasia, which is many, many dogs. And also what our garment will do, it also helps treat some of the same type of um, mobility issues associated with arthritis. And with the quality of life of animals today, they're living much, much longer. So the probability of getting arthritis is extremely likely. So this garment can be beneficial for so many dogs. The canine hip line is not only beneficial to dogs who are suffering from hip dysplasia or arthritis, but it may even be good for puppies and younger dogs. Now we always talk about two different types of pet populations that can benefit from the use of this garment. One, the dogs that are already symptomatic. So you see signs like uh, bunny hopping, difficulty getting up, climbing stairs when they can't get out of the car or get onto the couch, 
or when you see them walking and they've got displayed legs and they're kind of walking and kind of funny, or when they hit the floor, you hear this, this slapping motion. And you, those are signs that you can see in dogs that are uh, symptomatic. However, there, there are what we call at-risk breeds that are predisposed, it's just part of their DNA, that's part of the breeding, and you can test them as early as up to between six and nine months to see if that's part of their DNA, if that's their makeup. And if that is the case, we always say that if that group, you can catch it really young. So the product, if you use it early enough, it will delay the onset of symptoms that will eventually come because that is part of their genetic makeup. While the results will not be overnight and every dog is different, the canine hip line is a great tool for pets suffering from or at risk for hip dysplasia. You can actually wear our garment. We encourage incorporate it into your daily routine on a walk. You want to start out 10 to 15 minutes and build up because it is a wearable workout for your animal. But if you can incorporate this early on with your puppies, you can actually help slow down the onset of a lot of the issues associated with dysplasia. And the canine hip line is easy for you to put on your dog and easy for your dog to wear. So you want to slip it through the head first and then wrap the chest part around. Everything is color coded. So in the front part, you match the yellow flag with the yellow, with the yellow. And the thing is, you want it snug, but you don't want it too tight. So you want to be able to do, we always do a two-finger test underneath. So make sure that it fits, but we don't want to squeeze out the, the animal. And then you want to pull this back. So this hind part should be just in front of the base of the tail. Then you wrap the legs around it. It only goes in one direction. Out to the back, mm -hmm. and up to the front. In. And blue flag to blue flag. And again, after a couple of times, you'll know exactly where it should go in the animal. But again, the two finger test, right where it's supporting and hitting the hip on the animal. Okay. Now the dorsal elastic strap, the two sets of straps, uh, straps here, it creates an X to the back and it only goes in one direction. So again, blue to blue. And what the elastic strap, uh, what they do is they provide a light resistance to uh, the dog's core and trunk muscles. And the same for the bottom straps. So again, um, just to make sure that there's enough tension without being too tight. And even though the product has just launched, the canine hip line has already helped dogs who were involved in the product testing. We've had dogs that couldn't run that are running again. Dogs that couldn't chase birds that are chasing birds again. And again, every dog is unique and every case will be different, but we're absolutely certain we've spent so much time in R&D and testing and studying that we know that this is massively beneficial to the animal. And the canine hip line grew out of a passion for helping dogs live their best lives. Not everybody can afford a surgery. Not everybody can afford drugs. Why are they held back from helping their animal the best way they could? And so it was a lot of work. Um, we didn't take a paycheck. Um, so it really was, you know, sweat um, to bring it to life. But now that it's here, we just now have to get the word out and tell people at least there's another option. There's another way that you can treat your animal. Your animal, it, they do become part of your family. Um, we would do anything for them. So this can't do anything but help. So it was just, it was a passion project to bring it to life. And that passion is what makes Canine Align dedicated to improving the lives of dogs. If you would like more information about Canine Align or would like to purchase the Canine Hip Line, please visit CanineAlign.com. Larky and Jennifer are back now to answer a few more questions about Canine Align. What process did Canine Align use to create the Canine Hip Line product? So, you know, we always refer to this product as a Eureka product that we hope will save millions of dogs. But, you know, to call it that, you really have to see the whole process, what led us here. Um, as Jennifer said, you know, we're not really required by the FDA because of um, the canine space to do all the testing, but it is self-imposed because we want to be able to stand behind all the claims that we're making. So we did put ourselves through an internal clinical trial and we followed um, as rigid uh, protocols as we could without being an actual independent, you know, double-blinded study. But we did have a small sample population with dogs of varying degrees of hip dysplasia and we got um, practitioners from four different independently operated clinics. Two were vets 
uh, specialist, specialty vets and two were PTs or physical therapists to run their dogs uh, through the enrollment of the clinical trial. But we use the standardized protocols to measure and to grade the um, degrees to, t to actually run the dogs through the test period for a good three weeks. So what the dogs would do, would we would put the garment on every day for about an hour for three solid weeks. The measurements were taken before and after the duration of the test. And you know, even in such a small study and such a short duration of time, we were able to find such robust data, uh, such compelling data with the gains in musculature as well as reduction in pain. There was like 100% reduction in pain, uh, reduction in lameness, better mobility, better range of motion. There was such compelling data that we said, okay, now it's time to take it to market. So through that, then we went through seven iterations. This product that you see here, this is a seventh iteration of the prototype. Wow. Uh, and just to get that through the clinical trial, tested, and then to go to three sizes, going to manufacturing, just in time for our big launch at the VMX show in Orlando this January. Where can people purchase the canine hip line product? So we are so fortunate to work with BARC, Speech Animal Rehabilitation Center. We love Dr. Amy, who runs the facility. She was really one of our first champions and cheerleaders. And we are trying to bring something to life. We're so appreciative, but Amy's just so special to us because she believed in our product. She immediately incorporated it into her practice. So if you're in the Torrance area, we are sold out of BARC. You can also go online at canalign.com and we can ship anywhere really in the world. If you would like more information about Canine Align or would like to purchase the Canine Hip Line, please visit canalign.com. If you have a question, contact us and we'll be sure to get you the right answer. Call us at 310-618-5762 or email us at caninecorner at torrentca.gov. Now, if you missed the rescue dogs at the beginning of our show or if you're anything like me and want to see the adorable dogs again, here's your recap. Scooter is a two-year-old schnauzer and poodle mix. He loves going on walks and would be best in a home with adults or older children. He has a lot of energy and is a very loving dog. Wally is a six-year-old poodle. He's a very sweet dog and would love someone who could help him build his confidence. He gets along with other dogs. He would love to have a family to call his own. Noelle is a two-year-old West Highland Terrier mix. She walks great on leash and gets along with other dogs. She's a really sweet dog and would make the best companion. Cash is a two-year-old Tibetan Terrier. He gets along with other dogs and loves to play. He can't wait to have a forever family to call his own. If you are interested in adopting or fostering one of Lovebugs Rescue's dogs, please contact Lovebugs Rescue at lovebugsrescue.org or email them at info at lovebugsrescue.org. If you want even more Canine Corner or just want to say hello or share a photo of your pup with us, we always love to hear from you. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. That's all the time we have today. Thanks for joining us here on Canine Corner. I'm Rhiannon Trutanich and we'll see you next time.